Swift is weird sometimes. Let me explain. Imagine you need to make a string conform to identifiable. You might write an extension like this. In Swift 6, you will immediately see a warning. If Apple or anyone else adds the same conformance to string in a future version, your conformance could conflict. Xcode will suggest adding retroactive to silence the warning. But what does retroactive do? Retroactive can be used only on extensions that add a protocol conformance. It tells the compiler, I acknowledge that I don't own either the type or the protocol, and I accept the risk of future conflicts. Because you own neither, the library owner might later add the same conformance, which could cause conflicts or even prevent your app from compiling. Technically, that's it. Retroactive doesn't change runtime behavior or anything. It simply suppresses the warning and makes your intent explicit. It might feel odd that Swift introduced a new attribute just for this. However, this is more important than you might think. For example, what would happen if for some reason Apple decided to make string conform to identifiable and you left your conformance as it is? Let's find out and make an update in string.swift from the Swift codebase. To do that, we will download the Swift codebase from GitHub and make the change in the file. By the way, if you want to learn more about creating a custom version of Swift, check my video where I explain everything in detail. Link in the description. Let's find a string.swift at this path and let's add two extensions after line 379. One line is to conform a string to identifiable. The second line is just to confirm that we are using a custom version of Swift with a new static property. Don't forget to subscribe. Now I'm going to create a demo file with the following code. I string variable, my own extension to conform to identifiable, adding the my new ID suffix. Don't forget the retroactive attribute. And lastly, let's print the Swift and tips static property and the message ID. Now let's compile this from the terminal using my custom Swift and see the result. It prints the string value, the static property, and it also prints the ID we created with the suffix. Nice. However, let's add this new code. I'm adding a function that gets the ID from an identifiable instance. Let's see what we get this time. We are getting the ID from string.swift, not the one we created with the suffix. This means that when we interact with the protocol requirement directly, the higher priority conformance is the one from the Swift standard library, not yours. In fact, if we compile our demo from the terminal, you can see that the Swift compiler warns that the property ID will not be used to satisfy the conformance to identifiable, which is true. I think you get the idea. Adding conformances to protocols you don't own on types you don't own either is risky because your code can become unpredictable if an external dependency or Swift itself, as in this case, changes in the future. Retroactive only silence the warning. But the real lesson is to make your code bulletproof for the future. Lastly, is there a better way to do this? Actually, yes. Create your own wrapper. In this case, your type isn't owned by Swift or an external library and your conformance is under your control. By the way, this is just a demo. Don't use strings as IDs. That can be problematic. I have a video where I explain how strings or ints as IDs can break your animations. Link in the description. Now tell me, what do you think about retroactive? Do you think we need more attributes and keywords just to suppress warnings? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, my name is Pete, and this, this is Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.